Good morning everyone! Today, we are going to perform a team teaching about ratio and proportion. But before anything else, I would like to introduce myself first. I am Sir Jobert, together with Ma'am Mary, Sir Jeremy, Ma'am Ria, and Ma'am Hersheline. And our objectives are, at the end of the discussion, the grade 5 pupils should be able to define ratio and proportion, write the ratio of two quantities in simplest form, determine whether two fractions are directly or inversely proportional, cite examples of ratio and proportion in real life, and lastly, solve problem involving ratio and proportion. So we hope that all the BA Ed 3D students will pay attention to our team teaching so they could learn on how to teach ratio and proportion to the young learners. So at the end of the day, they could utilize those learnings on their teaching career. So please, everybody, sit back, relax, and let us enjoy watching the team teaching that is presented by Group 2. Alright children, so let's start the day through an opening prayer. May I request everybody to open their cameras and unmute their microphones. And let us all feel the presence of our Lord God. We should always pray before we proceed to our discussion and activities, so that God will guide us to understand and learn new lessons. Okay, class? Alright. In the name of the Father, in the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Please bow your heads and let us pray. Dear Jesus, please show me how to spend this day sharing your love in every way. Help me to be kind to everyone, to play and love and have lots of fun, shining your light and giving your grace, sharing your joy with a smile on my face. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Good morning, my grade 5 pupils. Wow, I can see a lot of happy faces today and everyone's clean and all of you are groomed properly. Good job, children. So, how's your day, class? Alright, very good to hear that your day is turning out well since everybody remains their cameras and microphones open. Let us sing our song every morning. So class, what was the title of our song again? Alright, very good. So the title of our song is Hello Song. Okay, so at the count of three, we will sing our song. Are you ready class? Alright. So, at the count of one, two, three. Ready, sing. Hello, everybody. How are you today? It's time to move your body and learn and play. Hello to my teacher, how are you today? I am gonna listen to what you say. Hello to my friends, how are you today? I am gonna share my toys with you today. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. Lift your arms up, put your arms down. Lift your arms up and shake it all around again. Up, put your arms down. Lift your arms up 
and shake it all around. Bend to the left, bend to the right, bend to the left, bend to the right. Hello everybody, how are you today? It's time to move your body and learn and play. Hello to my teacher, how are you today? I am gonna listen to what you say. Hello to my friends, how are you today? I am gonna share my toys with you today. I hope everybody will have a good day. <laughs> so wow, very energetic my grade 5 pupils. Now, before we proceed to our discussion, let me first check your attendance. Children, as we used to do every morning upon calling your names, everyone's used to say present. But let us make it in a creative way. Once I call your name, you must give two numbers. It can be your birth date, your parents' birth date, siblings' birth date, or your favorite numbers. For example, the teacher called my last name, which is De La Cruz. So, I will be giving my teacher with two numbers. For instance, Sir. 2 is to 4. Understood, class? Alright. So, let's start with um, Miss Agbanawag. Alright. Miss Agbanawag is present because she was able to give us numbers. Yes, Mr. Kalweng. Alright. Mr. Kalweng is also present today. And lastly... Mr. Zamora. Alright, Mr. Zamora is also present today because he was able to give us numbers. Alright, very good. My grade 5 pupils are all present today. Now, before we continue, let us recall our guidelines when we have our lesson in our classroom. First, be prepared and do our activities. Second, be positive and be happy. Third, be productive. Fourth, be respectful of your classmates and teachers. And fifth, be participative. Do you understand, class? Okay, very good. Okay, class, did I give you an assignment? All right. So, I hope that everybody had already passed their assignment in our assignment tab. So class, it's math time again. So, I have a song that I have prepared. I will sing it first. And for the second time, let us sing together. Okay? The song is this, Oh, it's math time after all. 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 Okay, everybody sings with me. Oh, it's math time after all. Oh, it's math time after all. Oh, it's mud time after all. Oh, it's mud time after all. Good job, children. So now, let's start then. It is a good day to bring up. So, children, do you still remember the lesson yesterday? Okay, great. Yesterday, we discussed about dividing decimals. So now, I have here... An equation about decimals. Okay, so for need to know if you really understand our lesson yesterday, I want you to solve this equation. Okay, then after that, we will going to solve it together, okay? I'll be giving you three minutes. Then after that, 
I will be asking one of you to represent his or her solution. Okay, class, it's already time. So now, let us solve the equation together. So, anyone? Okay, very good. So, kindly explain on how you come up with that answer. Okay, very good. So, it's everyone got the correct answer? Alright, good job. So now, let us proceed to the second equation. So again, I'll be giving you 3 minutes. And after 3 minutes, let us solve the equation together, okay? Okay, so you can, you can start class. Okay, it's already time. So, anyone who wants to share his or her solution on how you get the answer. Alright, precisely. So, this is the solution. So, class, is everyone got the correct answer? Alright, good job. All right, so before we proceed to our new lesson, I have here some pictures. Now, take a look at this picture class. So what can you say about these pictures inside the two boxes? Okay, there are pineapples and boys. Now, how many pineapples are there inside the box? Okay, there are four pineapples. How about on the other box? How many boys are there? Exactly, there are five boys. Now, this illustration shows that there are four pineapples and five boys. Now, my question is, which of these sets has a higher quantity? Again, which of these sets has a higher quantity? Yes, Mr. Fajardo. Very good. Boys. How about this one? What can you see? All right, these are fractions. So my question is, are these fractions proportional to each other? Exactly. So why do you say so? All right, very good. So these fractions, if we reduce them into lowest term, both of them will give us an answer of 1 half. In fraction 9 over 18, if you divided by number 9 into both numerator and then the denominator, we will have an answer of 1 half. And on the second fraction, if we divided by 5 on both numerator and then the denominator, we will have an answer of 1 half. So, they gave us an equal answer, 1 half. Therefore, they are proportional. Now, based on this activity, what do you think is our lesson for this morning? Anyone? Fraction? Uh, a while ago, we compared the pineapples and the boys, right? 
I ask you which of those sets has the higher quantity. So based on that, what is our topic? Anyone? Aha, uh -huh, comparing fraction. Now, what do you call that term about comparison of two quantities? You said a while ago that these fractions are proportional to each other. So, what is the topic? Yes. All right. Proportion. And what is the other one? Proportion and? Very good. So, our topic for this morning is all about ratio and proportion. Good job, class. So now, let us start the discussion. Let us start with ratios. Ratios used to compare two or more quantities. So sinasabi dito na ang ratios ay ginagamit sa paghahambing ng dalawa o higit pang bilang. So like for example, in our activity a while ago, you were able to compare the quantities of the pineapples and then the boys. So, nagkaroon ng comparison between the two things. Okay? And also, ratios used in many situations to describe how two or more quantities are related. Okay? So, sinasabi din dito na ang ratio ay ginagamit sa pag uh, di describe ng mga situations on how two or more quantities are related. So I have here example para mas ma enlighten yung mind nyo with regards to that statement. So a cake recipe requires twice as much flour as margarine. The ratio of margarine to flour is 2 is 2 colon 1. Okay? So the colon is read as is 2. Take note. The colon is read as is 2. Therefore, the ratio is read as 2 is to 1. Again, how do you read the colon into the ratio? Anyone? All right. We read colon into a ratio as is 2. Okay? So, take a look at this ratio. 2 is to 1. So, the first term here, which is 2, is what we call antecedent. Okay? Again, what do we call to the first term in ratio? Okay, it is the antecedent. While on the other hand, the second term is what we call consequent. Again, what do we call to the second term in the ratio? Alright, very good. It is the consequent. So, the two here is describes the amount of flour. Okay? As says here in our problem, a cake recipe requires twice as much flour as margarine. So, twice means two, okay? Therefore, the amount of flour is two. However, the amount of margarine here in our statement is only one. Therefore, the one in our ratio describes the amount of margarine. Understood? Alright. Very good. Alright, so let us proceed to the next definition of ratio. Okay. Ratios can also be written in fraction form. So, sinasabi dito na ang ratios is maari din natin siyang isulat sa fraction form. Okay? So, like for example... Sa ratio natin kanina, sa ating previous example, 2 is to 1. So, we can write 
that ratio into fraction as 2 over 1. So yung so yung first term natin which is 2 na antecedent natin. Yun yung magse-serve na numerator natin. And yung 1 na consequent natin, yun naman yung magiging denominator natin. So 2 is to 1 is equal to 2 over 1. Okay? And examples. So yun, 2 is to 1 is equal to 2 over 1. 3 is to 5. Anyone who would like to answer? Okay. Very good. This would be 3 over 5. Because the antecedent here is 3 and that would serve as our numerator and 5 is our consequent and that would be our denominator. Therefore, this would be 3 over 5, okay? Next, 10 is to 4. So, anyone? Alright, very good. So, this would be 10 over 4. So, 10 is the antecedent and this antecedent would become the numerator and 4 is our consequent and that will be our denominator. So, this would give us an answer of 10 over 4. However, this fraction is in higher value. Okay? So, we need to reduce this fraction in simplest form. We need to simplify this fraction. So, how are we going to do that? Of course, we need to think of a number that is uh, GCF to both numerator and then the denominator. So, of course, uh, we consider 2, okay? 2 is the GCF for both numerator and denominator. 10 is divisible by 2 and 4 is divisible by 2 also. So, 10 divided by 2, that would be 5. And 4 divided by 4, that would be 2. Therefore, the answer is 5 over 2. Okay, very good. So, this fraction is already in, in its simplest form. Okay? So, let's proceed to the next definition. So, ratios, sometimes ratios can be simplified. So, as what uh, I've said a while ago, that ratios can be on its simplest form. Okay? And ratios are simplified in a very similar way to fractions. So, yung ratio, sinasabi dito na sinisimplify siya, pinapaunti siya, na kahawig or magkatulad sa kung paano natin sinisimplify yung fraction. Okay? So, for example, the ratio 100 is to 50 is the same as the ratio of 2 is to 1. So, are they the same? Sa so, tingin nyo, tama ba tong statement na to na magkatulad daw? Yung 100 is to 50 and 2 is to 1? Okay, so let us find out. So, first of course, copy the 100 is to 50. We have to simply this ratio into simplest form to know if this ratio is same as the ratio of 2 is to 1. Okay? So, first, write it. 100 is to 50. So, we need to simplify it. 100 is to 50 into fraction form that would be is equal to 100 over 50. Okay? Then after that, 100 over 50, we need to reduce this fraction. We need to simplify this fraction into simplest form. Okay? 
So, think of a number that is uh, GCF for both numerator and then the denominator. So, anyone? Alright. So, 50 is the GCF for both numerator and then the denominator. So, we need to divide both 50. 100 divided by 50, that would be 2 and 50 divided by 50, this would give an answer of 1. So, that would be 2 over 1. So, 2 over 1 is in a fraction form. So, we need to convert it into ratio. So, the numerator will be our antecedent and the denominator will be our consequent. Okay? So, this would give us an answer of 2 is to 1. Okay? So, for your better understanding, I have here another examples. So, all you need to do is to simplify the following ratios. First, 35 is to 49. So, I'll be giving you 2 minutes to uh, solve this ratio, to simplify this ratio, and after that, we will solve it together to uh, find out if your answers are correct, okay? Alright, class, it's already time. So, first, we need to write it down, the uh, given 35 over 49, and of course, we need to simplify it into or convert it into fraction that would be 35 over 49. And of course, 35 over 49 is in higher value. So we need to reduce that fraction. So think of a GCF again. So anyone... Yes, very good. That would be 7. So, we can divide both numerator and then the denominator by 7. Okay, 35 divided by 7. Okay. 5. How about 49 divided by 7? Alright, that is 7. So, this would give us an answer of 5 over 7. So, again, convert it into ratio since we we get an answer of uh, 5 over 7. So, the numerator will be uh, our antecedent and the numerator, the denominator rather, will be our uh, consequent. Okay? So, this would give us an answer of 5 is to 7. Another examples. A class has 12 girls and 20 boys. Find the ratio of girls to boys. So, another, I'll be giving you 2 minutes. And after that, we will going to solve it together to find out if your answers are correct. Okay? Okay, class, your time is already consumed. So, let's start solving the problem. Okay, so first, we need to identify the given on this problem. So, the given are... 12 girls and 20 boys. So, we need to write it into ratio form. Okay? So, anyone? Alright. Very good. This would be 12 is to 20. And after that, we need to convert it into fraction. Okay? So, anyone? Alright. Very good. So, this would be 12 over 20. However, this uh, fraction is already in a uh, higher value. So, we need to simplify it. We need to simplify it into its simplest form, okay? So, uh, think of a number that is uh, GCF for uh, uh, numerator and then the denominator. So, anyone? Alright, very good. So, we can use a uh, number... Four. Okay, so 12 and 
is divisible by 4 and 20 is also the divisible into 4. So, we need to divide both of them into uh, 4. So, 12 divided by 4 is equal to anyone? Alright, 3. How about 20 divided by 4? Alright, very good. It is 5. So, this would give us an answer of 3 over 5. However, uh, we need to convert it again into ratio. So, anyone? Alright, very good. So, this would give us an answer of 3 is to 5 because the numerator 3 would be serve as our antecedent and the 5 which is the denominator would be serve as our consequent. Okay. So now, let us discuss the proportion. Alright? So when we say proportion, two equivalent ratios form a proportion. So ibig sabihin class, kapag meron tayong dalawang ratios na kapag sinimplify natin is magkapareho yung sagot, ibig sabihin proportion yon, Okay? Matatawag natin na proportion ang dalawang ratio if they have an equal uh, result. Okay? If uh, they have uh, simplified. Okay? For example, in symbols, A is to B is equal to C is to D. Or, A over B is equal to C over D. So, the first and the last term, which are A and D, are called extremes. Again, what do we call for the first and the last term in our proportion? Anyone? Alright. It is called extremes. Whereas, the second and the third term, which are B and C, are called means. Again, what do we call to the second and the third term in our proportion? Anyone? Alright, very good. These are means. So, the product of the means of a proportion is equal to the product of the extremes. So, paano nangyari yun? Paano kaya to class? Okay, sinasabi dito na yung product ng means sa ating proportion is magkahawig or magkatulad dun sa product ng ating extremes sa proportion. Okay? So, that is A times D is equal to B times C. Kapag uh, minultiply mo itong extremes, both extremes and both means, they would give you an answer. They would give you an equal answer. Okay? So, for more, for better learning, I have here some examples. So, example number one, 3 is to 27, 1 is to 9. Okay? So, first, we need to write it down, the uh, uh, given 3 is to 27 is equal to 1 is to 9. So, first, we need to identify if which would be the extremes. Okay, so what do you, why, what do you think are the extremes in our proportion, in our given proportion? Anyone? All right, very good. So the extremes are 3 and 9. How about our means? Anyone? All right, very good. These are 27 and 1. 
So after that, we need to simplify this. We need to combine those uh, terms, okay? So 3 times 9, we need to write it down. 3 times 9 and simplify it. 3 times 9 is equal to 27. And for the means, 27 times 1, we need to combine this term. 27 times 1, this would be 27 times 1 is equal to 27. Okay? So, aside from this process, I have also another uh, process that I'll be teaching to you in uh, identifying proportions. Okay? So, this uh, is also the process on how you will going to identify if uh, the two ratios are proportion. Okay? So, first, uh, we need to convert them into a fraction form. So, for the 3 is to 27. Convert it into fraction. This would be 3 over 27 is equal to 1 over 9. Okay? And after that, perform the cross multiplication. Okay? So, you need to perform the cross multiplication. So, first, cross multiply the 3 and 9, that would be 3 times 9. So, write it down. 3 times 9 and the 27, multi, cross multiply the 27 and 1. So, 27 times 1, write it down, is equal to 27 times 1. And after that, uh, you need to simplify these terms. Okay? 3 times 9, this would give you an answer of uh, 27 and... Of course, 27 times 1 is equal to 27. Uh, they are equivalent. Uh, you you got an equiva equivalent uh, uh, result. Okay? Therefore, you can say that this example or these ratios are an example of a proportion because they are equivalent. You've got both 27 on both ratios, okay? Another example. So, now, again, I'll be giving you 3 minutes to uh, solve this uh, problem. And after that, I'll be uh, asking you to share the some uh, solutions on how we uh, attain the final answer, okay? Okay, class? Okay, so it's already time. Your three minutes are already consumed, so let us now solve it together. Okay, so first, we need to, again, write it down, the, ano, the given and after that we need to identify the extremes so what do you think are the extremes anyone all right very good so our extremes are two and nine and also what about our means what are those anyone all right very good so these are three and six and of course we need to combine the similar terms, which are the extremes and then the means. So, we have to write it down. 2 times 9 and simplify it. 2 times 9 is equal to 18. And, of course, the means, 3 times 6 is equal to 18 also. Okay? So, you've got a, a same product. This, that's why uh, this uh, ratios are proportion okay and also again let us perform the other process on how to identify ratios if they are proportion so again uh, the ra the given ratios convert them into uh, fraction form so 2 is to 3 is equivalent for 2 over 3 is equal to 6 is to 9 
and that is equivalent to 6 over 9. And after that, uh, perform the cross multiplication, 6 times 9, write it down, 6 times 9, write it down, write it down, and after that, six ti uh, 3 times 6, write it down, and after that, simplify, okay? You need to solve this following terms. So, 2 times 9, that would be 18. And 3 times 6, that would be also 18. So, as you can see, we got, a, we got the same uh, value. We got the same product for both ratios. That is why these ratios are proportion. Okay? So, upon knowing the definition of proportion... And also, on how to solve ratios if they are proportion. Now, we are going to discuss the types of proportion. These are the direct proportion, inverse proportion, and partitive proportion. So, let us first discuss direct proportion, okay? So, when we say direct proportion, it exists when one quantity increases, the other quantity also increases. When one quantity decreases, the other quantity also decreases. Okay? So, paano nangyari yun, class? So, ganito yan. Kapag yung isang quantity is nag-increase, okay? Yung isang quantity de, yung isang quantity rin ay mag increase Okay? They are parallel. Kung magtatas yung isa, isang quantity, magtatas din yung isang quantity. Okay? On the other hand, when one quantity decreases, the other quantity also decreases. So, ibig sabihin, kapag bumaba yung isang quantity, bababa rin yung isang quantity. Okay? Naintindihan. So, for your better understanding, I have here example. Okay. I have here a uh, real-life situation example para mas maintindihan nyo yung direct proportion, okay? First, buying an item, okay? The more you buy, the more you will spend money, okay? So like for example, nagpasyal kayo sa mall ng mami mo and then may nakita kang mga laruan sa department store and gusto mo marami kang, bil marami kang mabibiling laruan. Of course, the more na madami kang bibilhing laruan, the more din yung ma-spend mong money. Okay? So, another example. Kumain kayo ni mami mo sa Jollibee. Okay? So, gusto mo ng madaming orders. To, so, the more you order to the Jollibee, the more you will spend money. Okay? Next example. Cooking one recipe. Your ingredients must be balanced to make it delicious. When you cook more, you need to add more ingredients. And if you cook small amount, you need to reduce the ingredients. So, consider na magbe-birthday ka ngayon. Okay? So, syempre, favorite mo yung spaghetti. Okay? And at the same time, darating yung mga friends mo. And of course, Si mami, kailangan niyang magluto ng maraming spaghetti. At the same time, kailangan niya ring mag-add ng more ingredients para mag-balance yung dami ng spaghetti sa sarap ng spaghetti, okay? So, syempre, kapag madami kang iluluto, syempre, kailangan mo ring madaming ingredients, okay? Kasi mag may tendency magkulang yung sauce ng spaghetti, Okay? So, that is why it becomes direct proportion. The more you cook, the more you will add ingredients. Okay? However, eh, if you cook a small amount, you need to reduce the ingredients. Okay? So, syempre, kapag uh, hindi mo balak mag-invite ng friends mo, Siyempre, si mami, magkukuk lang lang yung small amount ng spaghetti. And, siyempre, magre-reduce siya ng ingredients. Siyempre, kapag 
nagcook kasi siya ng maraming uh, ano spaghetti and napasobra sa ingredients. So, may tendency na hindi maging masarap yung spaghetti. So, if the mother cooks a small amount, she needs to reduce the ingredients. That is why it is considered as direct proportion. Parehas na nag-decrease, nagkaroon ng decrease. Okay? So, let's have example on problem solving. Okay? So, M is to 12 is equal to 30 is to 24. Okay? So, first, of course, we need to write it down. The given M is to 12 is equal to 30 is to 24. Ayan, sinulat na natin yung given. After that, we need to identify the extremes. Okay, so anyone, what do you think are the extremes? All right, very good. So our extremes are m and twenty four. Okay, how about the means? All right, our means are twelve and thirty. And as we used to do in our pre previous examples, we need to combine the similar terms. So we need to combine m. And twenty-four. We need to multiply these terms. So m times twenty-four. Write it down. M times twenty-four, and also the means twelve times thirty. And after that, we need to simplify. We need to solve the terms. Okay. So m times twenty-four. That would be twenty-four m or m twenty-four. And twelve times thirty that would be three sixty. And also, for us to remove the digit two and four, which is twenty four, we need to divide a number on both sides. So nakikita naman na natin na twenty four is a number that is suitable. To this, to this process, okay. So we need to divide a twenty-four on both sides, because visible na yung twenty-four dito sa m m twenty-four. So we need to divide twenty-four on both sides for us to remove the twenty-four, okay? Divide twenty-four. Ayan. So sure, we divide na natin. M24 divided by 24, syempre, we need to cross it out, the 24. So, natitira na lang yung M. Since we are looking for the value of M. Okay, so 360 divided by 24, that would be 15. So, the value of M is equal to 15. Okay, so now, we need to Copy again the original given. Ayan. And also, we need to substitute the value of M. Of course, M is equal to 15. So, that is why we replace the M into 15 is to 12 and 30 is to 24. And after that, we need to multiply the extremes and the means to know if these ratios are proportion. Okay? Okay? So we need to divide the fifty. We need to multiply rather the fifteen and twenty-four, and this would give us an answer of three sixty. And also, we need to multiply the twelve and thirty, which are the means. So twelve times thirty. Anyone? All right. This would give us also an answer of three sixty. Now, so how can we identify if these ratios are direct proportion? Anyone? 
Okay, none. Okay, so uh, let me identify the how this uh, ratios are become uh, proportion. Okay, so take a look at this first term, which is our antecedent. Okay, our antecedent is 15. And then to the second ratio, which is the first term in our antecedent also, which is 30. Okay, from 15 turns to 30. Okay, 15, naging 15, from 15 to 30. So, nagkaroon ng increase. Nag-increase siya. Okay? And, take a look at this consequent. Okay? 12, the second term in our first ratio. Okay? 12. Compared to the second term on the second ratio. Our consequent also on the second ratio. 24. From 12 to 24. Nag-increase then. So, both term increased. Okay? Nagkaroon ng increase. Okay? So, that is why we can say that these ratios are direct proportion. Parehas silang tumaas. From 15, naging 30. From 12, naging 24. Okay? Nagkaroon ng direct proportion. Another example. Okay, so again, I will be giving you 3 minutes to solve this problem. And after that, we will going to solve it together to find out that your answer is correct. So, children, it is now time. So, let us solve. So, again, copy the given. Identify the extremes. 9 and 6, of course. So, what about the means? Alright, very good. The means are M and 4. And of course, we need to combine the similar terms. The extremes... 9 times 6, we should multiply those terms. 9 times 6, we should write it down. 9 times 6, and of course, the means, combine the means. M times 4, write it down. And also, after doing that process, we need to uh, simplify those terms. 9 times 6, that would be 54. And M times 4, that would be 4M. Now, we need to uh, think. Uh, number again to uh, replace the four on the with the four e, with the m so that the m will remain okay so we need to divide both terms with four okay so four m divided by four cross it out so bring down m so after that. We need to simplify 54 divided by 4. This would give us an answer of 13.5. So, M is equal to 13.5. So, pwede, pwede rin siyang uh, 13.5 is equal to M. Pero, mas prefer ko lang itong M is equal to 13.5. So, dapat yung susundan natin as a whole is itong gantong format. M is equal to 13.5 since we are looking for the value of M. Okay? So now, uh, copy the original uh, given, which are the ratios of uh, 9 is to M and 4 is to 6. And uh, distribute it to the missing term, okay? The M. So M is, is equal to 13.5, okay? So this would something like this. 9 is to 13.5 is equal to 4 is to 6, so now, we need to multiply the extremes and then the means so that we can uh, discover if this if these ratios are proportion, okay? So, 9 times 6, okay, 54. How about 13.5 times 4, the means? Alright, very good. It is also 54. And now... We must identify these ratios if they are direct proportional. 
So, anyone? Exactly. Very good. So, uh, take a look at this number. Nine. The antecedent, first term on the, on the first ratio. And then, four. First term on the second ratio, the antecedent also. So, nine from nine to four. Bumaba. Nag-decrease. Okay? And then, to the second term on the first ratio, 13.5. Consequent. Or the consequent. And then, the other consequent on our second ratio, or the second term on the second ratio, 6. Okay? So, 13.5. From 13.5 to 6. So, what do you think? Okay, nagkaroon din ng decrease. Nag-decrease din. Bumaba. So, from first term, from cons both consequent, 9 to 4 both I, I'm sorry both antecedent rather from 9 to 4 and both uh, consequent 13.5 to 6 bumaba siya. so we can finally say that these ratios are direct proportion okay so understood class Alright, good job. So now, let us proceed to the next type, which is inverse proportion. So when we say inverse proportion, it exists when one quantity increases, the other quantity decreases. As one quantity decreases, the other quantity increases. So paano nangyari yun, class? So ganito yon. Kapag yung isang quantity natin is nag-increase. Of course, automatically, yung isang quantity natin magdi-decrease. So, magkasalungat sila. They are indirect. Okay? Indirect. As one quantity decreases, the other quantity increases. Kapag yung isang quantity is bumaba, asahan mo yung pangalawang quantity tataas yun. okay nagkakaroon ng indirect proportion okay indirect proportion or inverse proportion okay so for better understanding i have here examples on uh, uh, real life scenarios that shows inverse proportion. Like for example, in speed in time and traveling. So when you drive fast, the time of your travel will be shortened. So ibig sabihin, so like for example, imagine that you are going to school and late ka nagising. And of course, alam mo sa sarili mo na malilate ka na sa klase mo. Siyempre, sasabihan mo si daddy na bilisan niya yung pagdedrive. Okay? So, kapag binilisan ni daddy yung pagdedrive, nagkaroon ng increase sa uh, pagdedrive niya, sa pagpihit niya sa ano, pag-release niya ng gas. So, magkakaroon naman ng decrease pagbaba sa time ng pagtatravel mo. Mababawasan yung time na makakarating ka sa school, okay? Mapapabilis yung pagdating mo sa school nyo, okay? So, that is an example of inverse proportion. So, next, workers who work a certain job to finish in each days, Okay? When you add more workers, the job will be done fast. And when you terminate some workers, it will take more days to finish a job. Okay. So like for example, sa klase nyo, okay, kapag uwian, di ba, kailangan 
maglinis sa loob ng classroom. Ang gusto ni teacher, lahat maglinis. Okay? Hindi lang yung cleaner. So, nag add siya ng workers uh, that, uh, that will be uh, the students, you as, as a students. Pinaglilinis niya lahat ng students para mas madecrease yung time na ginugugol nyo sa school instead na umuwi na, okay? So, yung job, yung paglilinis, mas napapabilis. Okay? Nagkaroon ng increase ng student sa paglilinis, syempre, magkakaroon ng decrease ng uh, time sa para matapos nyo yung yung uh, ano na, yung uh, paglilinis. Okay? And of course, when you terminate some workers, it will take more days to finish a job. Okay? So, yon Doon pa rin tayo sa example natin yon So, like for example, cleaners, maglilinis after ng class. And then, si teacher, naiingayan na dun sa isang cleaners. So, instead na maglinis yung cleaner na yon for that day, papauwiin na niya, papalabasin na niya, papaunahin na niyang umuwi. So, nagbawas siya ng maglilinis sa school nyo, which is cleaners yon consider as cleaners. So, mas mahahaba yung oras ng paglilinis ng mga cleaners kasi nabawasan sila ng force to clean the classroom. Okay? So, that is, an, that is also an example of inverse proportion. Okay? So, Let us uh, apply this on uh, solving. So, example, 2 is to 4 is equal to 8 is to M. Okay? So, dito, of course, we need to remember the formula. We have our formula. Our formula is first term and second term First term rather times second term is equal to third term times fourth term. So that would be our formula. Okay? So we need to simplify the ratios. So that would be 2 times 4 since we are following the formula first term times second term and third term times fourth term. And also for the... Uh, Uh, second ratio, third term times fourth term. Okay. So, after that, we need to simplify these terms. This would be 2 times 4 is equal to, okay, 8. And 8 times M, that would be 8M. So, again, we need to think a number That is divisible for both sides, okay? That would be 8. So, we need to divide both sides with 8. So, 8 divided by 8, that would be 1, is equal to 8m divided by 8. So, that would be uh, uh, 1m, but we need to uh, write it down m only since we are looking for the value of m. Okay, so cross it out the 8 divided by 8 and bring down M is equal to 1. So, yon again, pwede siyang 1 is equal to M. However, mas prefer ko yung ganito class. M is equal to 1 since we are looking for the value of M, okay? So, after that, write the, the term, the uh, original given which are the ratios of 2 is to 4 and 8 is to M. However, we need to replace the M into 1 since M is equal to 1, okay? And after that, we need to multiply the first and then the second term and also the third and then the fourth term, okay? To know or to identify 
if these ratios are proportion. Okay? So, first, 2 times 4, that would be 8. And 8 times 1, that would be also 8. So, they are proportion. So, how are we going to identify if these ratios are inverse proportion? So, same process as we used to uh, in the direct proportion, in identifying direct proportion. So, first, we need to look for the first term for the first ratio and first term for the second ratio. Okay? This would be 2 and 8. So, from 2 to 8, nagkaroon ng increase. Tumaas siya, okay? And then, dun sa second term ng first ratio and second term ng second ratio, that would be 4 to 1, okay? From 2 to 8, Nagkaroon ng increase And for the second term For both ratios 4 to 1 Nagkaroon ng decrease So that is why we can say That these ratios Are inverse proportion So let us now Proceed to our second example Okay So our example is 6 is to 9 is equal to M is to 18. So now, I would like you to solve again on your own. And after that, uh, we will going to solve it together to find out if your answers are correct. So I will, I'll be giving you 3 minutes again to solve. So, okay children, so it is now time. So let us now solve. So, again, the formula, first and the time second term is equal to third and fourth term times fourth term okay so first we need to simplify the ratios into our formula 6 times 9 is equal to m times 18 and after that we need to simplify those terms uh, 6 times 9 is equal to 54 and m times 18 that would be 18m and after that we need to think of a number that would be divisible to both terms that would be it 18 and after that we need to simplify 18 m divided by 18 that would be 1 m or no need to write the 1 just the variable also since we are looking for the uh, value of m so and uh, and then to the other side 54 divided by 18 this would give us an answer of 3 okay then after that we need to copy again we need to write it down again the given and uh, distribute the na, uh, value of m so since the value of m is 3 so we need to distribute it into 3 so 6 is to 9 is equal to 3 is to 18 so after that we need to multiply the first and then the, the second term on first ratio and then multiply the first and then the second term in second ratio or the, or the third and the fourth term. So first, 6 times 9, that would be 54. And also, 3 times 18, that would be 54. And we can finally say that these ratios are proportion. So, paano naman natin malalaman kung they are in, if they are inverse proportion? So, ganito yan. So, uh, magbibase tayo sa, again, magbibase ulit tayo sa first term for both ratios, the antecedents, which are 6 from 6 to 3. Nagkaroon ng increase, right? And then, to the second term, terms for both ratios, which are the consequence, 9 from 9 to 18 nagkaroon ng increase nag-increase siya so on the first term for both ratios nagkaroon ng decrease and then dun the second term for both ratios nagkaroon ng increase so we can finally say that this pro these ratios are in inverse proportion 
So, has everybody got the correct answer, class? All right, good job. So now, let us proceed to the last type of proportion, which is the partitive proportion. So when we say partitive proportion, it is applied when a quantity is to be divided in a certain ratio. Okay. So sa malinaw na pagpapaliwanag class, ang partitive proportion is ginagamit siya sa paghahati-hati ng kabuoang dami ng mga bagay sa given amount ng ratio o sa hindi pantay na bilang o dami. So for better understanding, I have here an example. Okay? So let us solve this problem. So Maha and Melay earn 2,850 by making curtain because Maha did more of the work, they decided to divide the 2,850 in the ratio 3 is to 2. So, how does each earn? Okay. So, napapakita dito sa problem na to na hahatiin natin yung kabuang dami sa given ratio. Okay? So, first step, What is asked in the problem? So, ano nga ba yung tinatanong sa problem? So, yung tanong, how does each earn? Okay, so, the problem is, so, yung hinahanap natin is, the amount of each will earn, okay? And then, for the second step, what are the given facts? Okay? So, what do you think are the given facts? Anyone? All right, very good. So, these are the two thousand eight hundred fifty pesos, and then the ratio of three is to two. So, those are the given facts. How about the third step? What operations to be used? So, why do what do you think are the operations to be used in partitive partitive proportion? Anyone? Yes, we have multiplication, another division. All right. Any anything that you want to add? All right, division. So let's find out. Okay, very good. All your answers are correct. So in partitive proportion, we need the three operations of addition, multiplication, and division. And for the next step, the solution. So, what would be our solution? So, let 3x be the part of Maha. Since, mas madami yung naitulong ni Maha sa paggawa ng curtain. So, mapupunta sa kanya yung 3 sa ratio. Mapupunta sa kanya yung antecedent sa ating ratio na 3 is to 2. And on the other side, mapupunta naman yung Uh, consequent natin sa ating ratio na 3 is to 2 kay melay, okay? So now, what would, so how are we going to solve, okay? So, of course, we need to simplify those uh, given. So, of course, kailangan nating isolve yung total ng dami sa earn ni na uh, Maha and Melay. So, syempre, we need to get the 3. We need to add the 3x plus 2x. That is uh, 5x. And of course, we need to uh, copy the 2,850. And of course, we need to get the value of x by uh, dividing both sides of 5 so that We can eliminate the five here, and the x will be remained. Okay, so divide it both five, five x divided by five. That would be one x. So no need to write the one, just the variable, since we are looking for the 
value of x and 2, 8, 50 divided by 5, that would be 5, 70. So, the value of x is 570, okay? And after that step, we need to distribute, okay? We need to distribute the value of x uh, for maha, 3x. So, is equal to 3, substitute the value of x, 570. So, multiply 3 times 570 is equal to 1,710. And for melai, uh, melai is uh, 2x. So, we need to simplify is equal to 2, distribute the value of x, 570. 2 times 570, that would be that would be 1140 and after that we need to check your we need to check their uh, total earnings so we need to add uh, 1710 1, and 1140 and that this would give us an answer of uh, 2850 and it is similar to the uh, total earnings of, for of uh, of them, okay? And after that, syempre, we will going to write our answer and, and of course, their earnings are Maha earns 1,710 and for Melai earns uh, 1,140. And that would be their earnings, okay? So, for the next example, so, again, as we used to do, I'll be giving you time, 3 minutes, to solve in your own. And after that, we will going to solve it together. Okay? So, you may start. Okay, class, it is already time. So, first, uh, we need to solve. So, what would be our first step? Alright, very good. So, we need to identify the problem. What is us in the problem? So, the problem is... Uh, we are looking for the amount of the biggest share, okay? So, for the second step, what are the given facts? So, the given facts are... Anyone? Alright, very good. So, the given facts are 1,200,000 and then the ratio of 2 is to 4 is to 6. That would be the given facts. And for the next step, what operations to be used? So... Of course, we need to use the three operations, addition, multiplication, and division. And after that, solution. What would be our solution? Of course, 2 would be uh, the smaller value, 4 would be the average value, and 6 would be the uh, biggest value, okay? So now, let us identify. Let us solve for the value of x. We need to add uh, those... Uh, those uh, ratios, so 2x plus 4x plus 6x is equal to 1,200,000, okay? So, first, we need to add the uh, ratios, 2x plus 4x plus 6x, so this would be 12x, and of course, copy the total amount of uh, money that is being inherited uh, from their grandmother, that would be 1,200,000. And of course, we need to divide both sides with uh, 12 to eliminate the number 12 here to for the X to be remained. So, we need to divide both 12. So, 12 divided, 12 X divided by 12. So, we need to cross it out. That would be X. Bring down x is equal to one thousand to one million two hundred thousand rather divided by twelve. That would be two hundred one hundred thousand. Okay. So the value of x is one hundred thousand. Okay. So we need to distribute now the smallest uh, for the smallest value to x. Uh, we need to distribute the value of x. 2 times 100,000, that would be 200,000. For the average value for x, 4, distribute the value of x, 100,000. 4 times 100,000, that would be 400,000. And then for the biggest value, 6x is equal to 6. Uh, 
distribute the value of uh, uh, x which is the 100,000 and 6 times 100,000 this would give us an answer of 600,000 so after that we need to check so we need to add uh, uh, the total earnings for smallest average and biggest so add them and Uh, this would give us an answer of 1,200,000 and this is similar to the total uh, uh, amount of inherited. And after that, we, uh, ident we uh, should now identify the biggest share. So, what is the amount of the biggest share? Anyone? Alright, so the answer is... 600,000. So, 600,000 is the biggest share. So, those are the examples of partitive proportion. So, now, any question, class? Any clarifications with regards to our discussion for today about ratio and proportion? No more question? All right. So since no more questions, I'll be the one who will ask questions. Okay, so now, what is a proportion? So what is a proportion? All right, very good. These are two equivalent ratios. So kapag may two equivalent ratios ka, makakabuo ka ng proportion. So what is is a ratio. How do you define ratio? Alright, so when we say ratio, it is uh, the comparison of two or more quantities. Okay, that is a ratio. And then kapag sinabi naman nating uh, uh, direct proportion, All right, very good. So when we say direct proportion, it exists when one quantity de decreases, also the other quantity decreases. And of course, when one quantity increases, of course the other quantity also increases. And that is direct proportion. How about partitive proportion? All right, very good. So when we say partitive proportion, it shows the total number of an object distributed into two or more unequal quantities. All right, very good class. I'm so happy. So how about inverse proportion? All right, very good. So uh, inverse proportion. It exists when one quantity increases, of course, the other quantity decreases. On the other hand, if one quantity decreases, the other quantity increases. So, there are uh, indirect uh, proportion, okay? That is inverse proportion, okay? So, anyone... Uh, kindly uh, give us a scenario of uh, of inverse proportion. All right, very good. So, like for example, sa inverse proportion nga kapag uh, like for example sa uh, speed and time kapag yun nga kapag binilisan mo yung pagpapatakbo or pag uh, pagpunta pagpunta sa uh, pupuntahan mo, mas bababa yung time bago ka makarating dun sa pupuntahan mo. And that is an inverse proportion. Very good. So, how about in direct proportion? In terms of, ano, spending money. Okay. Anyone? All right. Very good. So, syempre, the more na gumamit ka ng air condition sa room mo, the more din na uh, yung magagastos mo sa electricity bill nyo. So, that is an 
direct proportion. Okay, very good. So now, you will going to have your quiz that will serve as your assessment for us teachers to test your understanding about our discussion. And after that, my co-teachers will also present to you your assignment for you to be able to read that particular topic so that tomorrow, you will going to have that stock knowledge, okay? So, thank you children. I hope you've learned a lot for this day. Again, thank you for listening. God bless and keep safe. Good day again, grade 5 students. Did you all enjoy our topic for today? Good. Did you all learn? Very good. So let's proceed to our quiz. Are you all ready? Great. Before we start, this is the directions you need to follow. First is Copy the following problems into your quiz notebook. So, get your quiz notebook. Second is, answer them and once you finish, take a photo of your work and attach it to the answer tab. Did all clear? Very good! Here in letter A, Give the ratio of the figure below, then reduce to their lowest term. Here in letter B, find the value of variable to make a direct proportion. In letter C, find the value of variable to make an inverse proportion. D. Solve the problem to make partitive proportions. Number 1. The product of two whole number is 196. And the ratio is 1 to 4. What is the larger number? And for your assignment, study about the percentage for our next lesson tomorrow. Okay, students, are you all done copying the problem? Okay, very good. Good luck and God bless. And you may now leave the call. See you all tomorrow. Bye, students. Keep safe. Bye.